Hi everybody, I'm Chiara and in this video I will introduce you to some of the most advanced features of the settings page. Let's start with the network parameters. If the control unit is equipped with an Ethernet port, this section allows us to assign an IP address to it. There are four network parameters and these are the IP address, the netmask, the gateway and the TCP port. Once the parameters are all set, click on the Change Network Parameters button in order to apply the changes. The Fieldbus Parameter settings are found in the section bearing the same name. These are the data encoding contained on the exchanged messages and the addresses in which the control unit reads and writes data. In particular, ProfitSafe requires that the F models have a unique address within the network. It is possible to configure these addresses in this table by inserting them under the version of the connected PLC. The Change Fieldbus Parameters button is used to commit the changes to the control unit's memory. If the control unit is provided with an Ethernet port, the Modbus Parameters section is used to enable communication with the control unit via Modbus, along with the related listening port. As usual, click on the Change Modbus Parameters button to commit the changes to memory. Finally, let's take a look at advanced section. The multi-control unit synchronization ensures that there is no interference between multiple Inkspot systems deployed in the same area. In this example, it will be enough to set a different channel for each of the control units. The detection fields dependency parameter will determine whether a movement sensed in a specific detection field will lead to the deactivation of just its own output or also of the ones related to the detection fields that follow. In the Activity History section we can find the log verbosity level, which allows configuring the level of detail of the internal log data, a download log button, that we can use to download the log from the control unit, which contains information events and diagnostic events. The Erase Log button allows us to delay the information events section. In case it's not deleted, the oldest information events are overwritten when the maximum size of the section is reached, that is 3500 events. There is also the Download Sensor Debug Info button. This allows downloading a zip file useful for debugging where requested by the Inspect Technical Support Team. Finally, the Configuration Reports Archive which allows us to access the archive of previous reports and download the related PDF files to the PC. In this section, we can find a list of configuration checksums. Let's look at them together. The configuration report hash is a unique alphanumeric code computed by taking into account not only the entire configuration, but even the information which makes up the report, such as the details of the commit. On the other hand, the dynamic configuration checksum is associated with a single configuration and considers both common and dynamic parameters. For example, it is useful to verify that at a certain time a specific dynamic configuration is actually enabled. In the Accounts section, we can change the language of the software and the admin password. Here we go! That's it for the settings page! 
If you want to know more in detail about how the validation page works, don't miss the next video! Thanks for watching! See you soon!